get it out there. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. No, not this, not this. So, yes, it's there, it's there. Let me do it. Uh, but today's date is not on the oh. on the so desktop. It's, it's in the desktop. Yes, it's there. Yeah, this way. Okay. Yeah, this one. I think Jaydeep sir is. Huh? Uh, so, good afternoon, people. Uh, we represent uh, basically the industry, the Kuchi Metro. We have seen uh, how the policymakers has told what to do, or how how we will just represent you how to do it. I have just taken the points from our policymakers. All the points they have told. Kuchi is a single city, and this picture itself represents Kuchi. Basically, we have got the metro station, metro uh, alignment, we have got the water metro, we are coming with the canal rejuvenation projects and the canals are also going to be used for integrating metro, water metro, everything. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a good podium person. I like to roam around anyway. <laughs> so I'll just, uh, uh, so I'll just uh, uh, go through it. So I'll just tell about my company basically. Uh, Kochi Metro uh, want to enrich the quality of the people. Uh, uh, the, we deal in metro, we deal in, in uh, cycles, we deal in, not in taxis, because we didn't go want to go to the taxis because there are a lot of aggregators over there. And we don't want to be in the fossil fuel business because taxi means fossil fuels. So uh, the next one is water metro. It's a unique project which is going to come and commission in the next month of uh, this year. And we have got also the electric buses in our foray. So we have got everything which we call as integration of the systems. So I'll just ask my uh, colleague to run through the systems. Hi, everyone. Uh, we'll keep it integrated, seamless, and short as possible. Uh, uh, why Kochi, as he said, uh, it's the geographical uniqueness of the place because we have road, we have rail, we have already have uh, the water water uh, bodies uh, around and we have people living in islands where there's a very high density and the pattern of the travel is from high density areas in the major travel patterns are high density areas in the island to the mainland in the morning and then going back to the uh, islands in the evening. So uh, we had uh, taken this into consideration. Kochi is also a very economically fragile place, like zero uh, from the uh, from the sea level, which makes it extremely um, the the need for being resilient in that way is 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 on the high um, for us. Uh, so we have also chosen ca low carbon. Uh, initiatives uh, like uh, even the IPT, we are going for electric autos and the buses are refeeders. Even the uh, the the, uh, the water project, well, water metro is a hybrid mode where it uses both uh, uh, diesel as well as uh, uh, battery power. Uh, so so that that is what uh, we have we have integrated into our planning. And uh, Kochi Metropolitan Transport Authority, as Agarwal has already mentioned, it is the first one of the first UMTAs to be established in India. But there are certain institutional issues with it, so we'll have to deal with that. I will talk about it in the challenge. Um, the, this is why we've uh, taken integrated mobility, uh, why Kochi needs an integrated mobility. Uh, we'll just skip through this, but we like to actually look at the ease of mobility in a city, uh, which actually speaks about not just ease of, it's, it's inextricably linked to the ease of living and ease of doing business. So ease of mobility is a very, it, it, it features very high in our uh, agenda. Um, we'll just skip, everyone knows what a mass uh, should be, and uh, but as Sagawal sir was saying, which we really missed was the data, but the rest of it, like the physical uh, integration part of it, the fair integration part of it, and uh, marketing and information part of it, uh, providing people with uh, the channels of information of all modes of transport and institutional integration is extremely important. Uh, the critical fa design factors we have taken into considering this uh, multimodal connectivity is the total cost of the travel, the time that people actually have to uh, spend on travel, uh, reliability of the system and capacity and uh, we, one, one thing that we also consider is the inclusivity of the system uh, as well as the capacity of the system. So these are the design factors of the integrated mobility that we're actually uh, trying to focus about. So if you can see, it's not very clear if you, it's, since it's on, the, uh, on, on this thing, but uh, you could see a metro line going. Um, there is a, a buffer zone like a yellow color thing, which is the uh, IPT uh, zone, which is around five kilometers uh, around the metro zone. Um, so that is the last and the first 
we, we would like to call it the first and the last mile phase of, con uh, not the mile, but the phase connectivity, where, which, is, which goes beyond the first and a few miles. Um, uh, and then you can actually see uh, those uh, uh, orange lines, which are the feeder connectivity, um, uh, which are c uh, connected by the electric buses that we run, um, which actually now is run by a, a, a under a license, but we would love to, uh, we, we are in the process of acquiring electric buses to sort of uh, enhance the, uh, the network and the headway, uh, better headway. Uh, also, you can see the water metro connectivity. Uh, so this would be the Kochi's integrated mobility map. At, in the, at, at, if, if it's everything gets implemented, this would be, there will be an IPT, there will be a rail, there will be a metro, there will be a, uh, the feeder bus services, as well as the um, water metro, which will, in the final phase, will have the canal rejuvenation product where, where we will run smaller uh, boats to connect metro and the uh, water metro areas. Um, the feeder rebuses, which generally what we actually talked about is connects the suburban areas beyond five kilometer, which, which is not act actually a la uh, final and the first mill. It's, it's more of a suburban uh, attract because Kochi itself is, is a very linear place. So we need to think beyond uh, Kochi at some level to get metro going uh, from Trishur, which is the adjoining uh, city, uh, Kotem, which is adjoining city, the Alapura is also an adjoining city. So we need to look at peripheries also to get people in. So that's what we have tried to do with the e-buses covers uh, the design factors we have taken into consideration is where the feeble public transport network, the conventional public transport network doesn't actually exist. We have tried to cover that area. Uh, we have also covered, uh, tried to cover huge traffic generation area where, where the most traffic is generated like hospitals, like airport, uh, or, or where, where you have the, uh, the college, the educational institutions, places like that. Uh, we also try to give connectivity to the airport, which also is one of our uh, future phases of connectivity. The third phase actually takes metro to the airport, so we've already put in a feeder service to the airport, and which actually uh, is giving good ridership right now, which sort of anticipates how the, the ridership of the metro would be when implemented. Uh, then uh, uh, the feeder buses also tries to connect water metro and metro rail stations where there is a distance between the two. Uh, now we have only 10 AC electric buses, which is, as I said, runs under a lease, but we are in the process of acquiring another 15 more buses. e autos uh, we have gone, we have tried many models, like uh, before COVID there was a licensed model. As uh, some of the speakers were saying, sometimes it's just not sustainable uh, because uh, because of the ridership concerns that we have. Many of the, uh, the, the providers, the service providers are really not interested in catering to smaller metro uh, like Kochi, uh, unlike those like DMRC or the Hyderabad Metro where they have the numbers. Some people, some mo we, we can't find solutions from uh, the, the established, uh, uh, you know, last mile uh, feeder service providers. So we had to think, um, we have to make our own kind of a feeder service. Um, so the last mile connectivity is, uh, the auto rickshaws are going to be, we have already put out a tender, so we'll be, it'll be owned by KMRL and operated by a union uh, of drivers. It's an umbrella organization of all the political unions in uh, Kerala, which is how we try to go about to minimize the friction between uh, the unions and the uh, establishment. So there it will be an app-based, will be VLTD, so we'll understand how people is moving around using the IPT. Uh, so we'll get data as well. So not just the historical data, but as people use it, we'll also get how the pattern of uh, travel will be within the area of Kochi using an IPT. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'll just... I'll just take two more minutes. Uh, water Metro, this is a very important project, so just give us two minutes because Metro everybody knows. So what's a Water Metro? And wh how we coined the name Water Metro? So we gave the uh, name Water Metro because the entire experience of Metro is being shared in the Water Metro. It's a ferry system in which you go to the AFC system. We have a passenger control system in which you uh, restrict the number of people because 100 is the number of passengers which you can take in a ferry. So you cannot uh, get more people on board. So we have got a passenger control system over and above the AFC system. So this is the most intricate and uh, technologically high-tech system which would be available, and I vouch for that, basically, which will be available in India or in the world at this point of time. So w w how much are we covering, basically? This is all because of the geography, as uh, somebody has told about Leon, basically. 
we are going to be the next Leon or Venice, basically. So we have got the geog uh, geographical uh, 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 not restrictions, but better things in the uh, city of Kochi. So we are going to put 78 number of hybrid boats. I'll correct, I would like to correct my colleague because it's purely hybrid and the diesel is only going to be used in case of a evacuation emergency only. It's purely running on lithium titanate ba uh, uh, batteries, which is the most sophisticated battery chemistry available as on date. Earlier we were using NMC batteries and lithium ion ba batteries. We, we did not go for NMC ba batteries because the number of cycles of charging basically gets reduced in the NMC ba uh, batteries. So we are going for a uh, period of one hour fast charging. Eight minutes is the charging required for the entire uh, battery systems for running one hour. So we are uh, going to integrate with the metro lines. We are going to integrate with the, uh, the canal rejuvenation project also in the next phase. So hopefully uh, on November 4th, uh, our prime minister will be inaugurating this water metro system because uh, it's a make in India pro uh, project. Cochin Shipyard is making the project. And uh, this is our canal rejuvenation project. So uh, you can see the, uh, the black lines over there. This is crisscrossing the entire city. Green line is the metro line and the dotted lines is the water metro system. So I'm going to connect every single point inside the city. It will be just like the city of Venice. One more thing I'll just uh, uh, impress upon is our company is also into you now STP systems. Uh, our uh, metro company, uh, though we are a metro company, we are into metro rails, we are into ferry systems, we are into cycles, uh, bike systems, we are into now uh, the STP systems because in order to make this uh, canals navigable, we need to clean the canals. The entire canals is uh, uh, of filth. So now KMR has also done the entire network of the sewerage treatment plants, and uh, it will be the biggest uh, single unit system, multi-unit system with almost 80 MLD. That also we will be doing as part of this project. So non-motorized transport, you know, uh, yeah, I'm just skipping it. Uh, this is also discussed. So almost every point which has been told by the, uh, the our uh, uh, accomplices has been covered in Kochi Metro, and we are going to slowly, gradually increase the solutions. So what are the challenges, basically? Challenges, as usual, are the legacy issues. We have got different institutions working in silos. We, Kodatu has also been very helpful in uh, integrating uh, all the partners together, rationalization of routes, and arriving at a viability system. Now, this has already been told. There is no fit solution for all city. Surat cannot be Kochi. So, Kochi has got its own legacy, cultural, demographic issues, which we need to deal with. So we are in talks with all the uh, stakeholders. Then basically understand the best practices, adopt and adapt. So Water Metro, I'll just tell one more minute. Water Metro all started with uh, me also as a part of the team, founding member, going to Sweden and uh, visiting the Enchandia uh, water vessel. That was a whole thing all together. And uh, there was a water buses. So I could not adopt the entire water bus or the enchantia system over here. We adapted over to the system to here and used it. So anything cannot be adopted as such. So this is uh, our last slide, one step ahead of Leon. Here I got the metro system going on. Here I got the water metro system and the bus hub of Kochi City in one single shot. This is already there. Etigrade systems are already in place and we are going to connect it entirely. So we are one step ahead of, sorry to say, but <laughs> Leon. Thank you. Thank you so very much, everyone. I think we've uh, substantially overrun our, our time for the session. So uh, unfortunately, the break's going to disappear. And I think the next session's going to start. And I had a lot of questions for a lot of you all, uh, maybe on the sidelines, unfortunately. So, uh, so thank you so very much, uh, panelists, for being here. Thank you so very much, sir. For being here. Thank you very
session which is on alternate mobility solution. Uh, all of you know that uh, we have cities of various sizes. We have various mobility requirements and we have done quite well in terms of developing metro in various cities. We have done quite well in developing bus system in several cities. But then there are multiple other requirements which has to be actually inducted based on the size of the city, the topography of the city, the density of the city. So we are going to discuss today what are the alternate mobility solutions exist which actually fit in between these two modes and which can really facilitate our cities uh, which are actually of uh, medium or moderate nature. So uh, we have very eminent panel of experts to start with, we have uh, with us Mr. Jaydeep, who's OSD Ministry of Housing and Urban Development. He will be uh, joining us virtually through uh, uh, VC and will be providing us uh, his perspective of the government initiative on various alternate mobility solution. So uh, if we can connect to sir. Sir, over to you uh, to provide the insight on the alternate mobility solution uh, and give us what are the initiative of the ministry in this regard. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, participating speakers, distinguished guests, members of the podium, and everyone in the attendance. It's my honor and privilege to at this gathering on the occasion of InfoFresh seminar on sustainable development. On behalf of OVA, I welcome you all to this event with immense fervor and enthusiasm and hope it will further bilateral engagement between both nations on issue of critical importance. With world undergoing immense change in the recent days, its challenges vis a -vis mobility, sustainability, and identity have become more intertwined and complex. With rapid urbanization, increase in population, transition, and livability issues, sustainable mobility has become imperative to our cause. In India, 31% of the population currently resides in urban area and is expected to grow to 38 by 2020, 2026 and to 58% by 2050. The concerns about rising pollution levels in the pollution sector alone contributes to 15% of the country's greenhouse gas emissions. As city continues to suggest the stress on pre existing road infrastructure increases, this city development taking a more or less homogeneous Route all over the world, maintaining the distinct identity of the city become a challenge. So sustainable development will be less global, more local, that is global and local. In its practice, where you take ideas, inspiration, and innovation from your own history, culture, and art forming a pattern of your own, and then build on it to make the city livable, mobile, and sustainable. Today, India has taken a leading role in alternative mobility solutions, considering its tremendous transport market potential and the government push for public transport users. Newer eco friendly technological prospects are being considered for mobility. India, with a robust uh, operational uh, metro network of 778 kilometers in 20 cities, uh, carries about uh, 6.1 million commuters uh, on daily basis. During pre COVID times, it used to be 8.5 million, which has now reduced to 6.5 million. And with rapid transit and its more moderate options like Metro Line and Metro Mo are being pursued across multiple cities as an improvisation of the public transport. India now seeks to strongly establish rail based rapid transit system as a vital. Pan-regional transport with additional 1,000 kilometers of 
Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we also wanted to actually understand if you can uh, indicate that what kind of support uh, ministry is providing to the cities uh, for developing these alternate modes, something like Metro Light and uh, Metro Neo, uh, so that we really, I mean, see that these are implemented in all these medium-sized cities, sir. Uh, Actually, this, uh, as we all know, that metro system are very cost intensive, and uh, it is uh, it is has been implemented in, in the major city centers like Delhi, Hyderabad, Chennai, Mumbai, Calcutta. So they are the most suitable option for the cities like this. But as we all know, wherever metro system has been implemented, it has not only uh, solved uh, transportation problems. But it, it has really transformed the city. Uh, therefore, uh, we we have started receiving demands from the tier two cities also, and uh, uh, cities like Kochi, Lucknow, they have provided they have all had the conventional metro system. But what happens with uh, this kind of system? This is uh, a very very cost intensive system, and uh, the cost uh, the the rider change which is expected in tier two cities. Is, uh, is, it will never match uh, the rider scope which we have achieved in tier 1 city. Therefore, this, uh, uh, in 2019, uh, this, our ministry has come up with, uh, with, uh, with a standard which is metro light, which is a rate based, based standard. And it is nothing but a, a strong a, uh, platform working on a elevated or a great, a great sector. And thereafter, uh, uh, it will uh, the cost of this uh, metro light which we have uh, received some of the estimates that it is uh, really between 50 to 60 percent. If we have more at the sections, then it can be as low as 40 
percent of the cost of electrical vacuum system. Uh, in the meantime, Mahametro has started working on a uh, this uh, uh, rubber tire based uh, nitrogen studio solution, and they point this name as Metro Neo, and we have come up with a standard of Metro Neo in 2020, and uh, the, the cities, uh, this Metro Line and Metro Neo solutions are with us, and as far as uh, this, uh, how we are going to adopt this system. If you are, if you, it should be dependent upon three tower feet direction traffic. If your three tower feet direction traffic is 50,000 and above, we should go for a conversion metro system. And if it is between uh, 8,000 to 15,000, then metro light should be a solution. And if it is uh, less than 8,000, then we will go for a metro new solution. And metro new solution is, is cheaper, even cheaper than your uh, metro light solution. And it will cost around uh, 25 30% of the conventional metro system. Uh, we have received DPR from uh, uh, NAFE, which is a 32 kilometer uh, uh, metro network of uh, metro neo and, and it's costing around uh, uh, 2092 crores. So if you see, this cost is only about 60 or 65 crores per kilometer. And as far as metro light is concerned, we are receiving, uh, we have received uh, this DPR uh, of Jorapur uh, and Jamyo and Srinagar, which is at the center, and it is costing around 140, 150 crores per, per kilometer. So this is the situation, and uh, if some more cities have a wish to exist, invest in uh, this metro light, metro mass new technology, which is going to do in Tamil Nadu and uh, your, uh, you know, this. Uh, uh, you know, this uh, Gujarat, the three cities of the Gujarat, and Dehradun has also come up with the DPR of Metro Neo. So many cities are uh, are able to exist in these type of technology. It will not only provide it provide the same kind of services with at a much lesser cost as compared to conventional metro. Thank you very much, sir, for providing us insight on alternate modes being developed in various cities. Thank you very much. Uh, now I invite uh, other speakers also on the dais. Mr. Ankush Malhotra, who is head of urban planning and transit development, Sistra India. Mr. N. Mohan, deputy general manager, head of EBCI, Convergence Energy Services Limited. And Mr. Shashank uh, Achantodi, chief minister's uh, urban leaders fellow, government of NCT Delhi. May I now invite Mr. Ankush Malhotra to uh, kindly uh, give his presentation on the various things related to alternate mobility solution. Mr. Ankush. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Ankush Malhotra. I head the Urban Planning and Transit Development Department at Sestra India. Uh, our MD, Mr. Hari Somal Raju, he could not make it to the event uh, due to some other urgent uh, work he had at the office. So I'll just give a brief introduction about you know what Sestra is, what we have been doing, and all. So basically, we have a 65 years of kind of history. We are a French uh, company based in out of Paris, which is our headquarters. And it's a company which is a parent company of SNCF and RATP. We are the global leaders in mass harness systems. Basically, every uh, out of every two systems in the world, uh, Sistra had designed one of the systems and all. And if you see in terms of global ranking and all, we are the third in the uh, mass harness systems and 10th overall in the transportation thing. We are spread across 88 countries and working on various modes of uh, public transport system here. If I go about in India, we are a team strong of 2,500 2, people uh, spread across various offices. Our head office is in Faridabad, but we are sp spread across the major uh, locations and all. We offer a range of services from pre-engineering services to testing and commissioning, involved in consulting, detailed design, and construction supervision and all. 
and we work across various urban mobility modes, not only metro, but LRT system, the BRTS, and the ROFE uh, system and all. And we, I'll be happy to share that in detailed design and construction supervision, we have experience of 600 kilometers of metro viaduct and all. And right now we are working on metro projects have been 96 kilometers have been completed. About 135 kilometers are ongoing network. So we are spread across this, uh, various uh, cities in India. Uh, now coming to the major topic of the day and all, uh, I just like to emphasize that as per the third binary report taken out by MOEFCC, uh, the total GHG emissions about to 2,500 metric tons uh, equivalent, out of which 13% is the contribution from the transportation sector. If you see out of which 90% uh, majorly is the road transport sector, in which freight takes about 45 to 60%, and a major share, about 30 to 40%, is from the urban passenger transport. So the need and focus is how to reduce the GHG emissions from the urban transport sector and all. Because as we know, I won't repeat the statistics, uh, we are a growing country. Uh, by 2050, we will have 2030, about 50% of our population will be residing in urban areas. The passenger travel demand is increasing, also the car ownership, we can stop it. But basically we need to do how to make it more sustainable, how to increase the shift from private mode to public transport, how to increase more, encourage more people to use more and more of public transport. But a major emphasis also needs to be given on the non-motorized transport. As we can see, the modal shares in NMT are decreasing, have decreased from 36 to 31%, and PT have decreased from 54 to 36%. Therefore, a major emphasis needs to be given uh, by the government, and they are presently doing, is to encourage greener public transport system. Some, again, some statistics and all, uh, the demand for sustainable public transport is very high. Uh, we can see that uh, there is a need for having a pan-India strategy shift from carbon neutral modes. There is an interesting study done by Climate Action Group and all, which says that if we do nothing, uh, by 2050 we have about 1,170 uh, 1, met metric tons of CO2. Now to reduce the CO2 uh, emissions in the transport sector, we need to make it carbon neutral. And how we can do it is through use of various instruments and all. These are related to urban, innovative urban planning, to modal shift, to improved efficiency, and also encouraging electrification and use of alternative fuels of uh, transport. This is all being done by the government to meet its commitment as given to the Paris commitment of COP26, and now COP27 we are approaching in Egypt. So to meet those targets, uh, each of the government departments, whether it's Mahua or Ministry of Road Transport or the Department of Heavy Industries, are focusing on strategies so as to reduce the emissions from the urban transport sector. Now let's look at what are the various alternative mobility solutions and all. Like everybody is talking about, metro is only for Taiwan cities. Buses are able to meet a PHPDT of, let's say, you know, 5,000 to maybe 10,000, not more than 5,000 thing but something between 5,000 to above, you know, what do we do? So we have various alternatives. We have LRT system, we have cable car system, we have elevated BRTS electric buses, or we can, uh, the Metro Neo, which the ministry has come out with. The various options are there, which cater to a PHPT range between five to 70,000, because Metro can cable up to 70,000, but something between five to 15,000 is really the point of contention where the cities are struggling with. If you see, uh, basically choice of system depends on the ridership in the city, the growth of the city, the urban dynamics, the density pattern and all. So we choose a right transit system is the major problem and, uh, in the cities and all. Then what we need to focus is on multimodal transport system, is integrating all the urban transport systems to enable seamless connectivity. When we talk about multimodal transport system, it's not only about uh, physical integration, but institutional integration, financial integration, and also sharing of data. Because the last point is there is encouraging mobility as a service. Mass can only happen if the data is shared between all the public transport operators with under a single platform. 
and I as a user can plan my journey from my home to my office and other recreational activities using a single app. That's what we need to work on apart from choosing the right transit system and all. So just to focus on the vision, uh, we, on, we want to develop a vision of a low carbon, climate resilient, and energy efficient urban mobility system and all in Indian cities, focusing on adopting low carbon initiatives by integrating land use and urban mobility city level, then making the best use of technology, where it's uh, shifting from uh, a diesel base to electric base or CNG, or now we have hydrogen. Developing an integrated urban mobility network to encourage people to make sustainable travel choices. Then we need to do collaboration with various agencies, with public and private sector, to enhance investment in climate-friendly urban transport projects. A lot of initiatives are being taken by the government in terms of funding a lot of urban transport projects. But there are a lot of climate-related funds which are lying with the private sector, which the cities need to work on and enhance the capacity so as to access that climate funds and fund the urban transport projects. Also, one very important point is decentralize the urban freight mobility. Urban freight, as I told earlier, accounts for 40 to 50, 60% of the emissions and all. So unless we decentralize the urban freight mobility in the Indian cities and all, we'll not be able to achieve the, our vision of being carbon neutral by 2050. Just to emphasize our projects in India, we are focusing on some of the themes that I've been talking about. We are working on doing feasibility study in DPR for LRT system. We are working on Coimbatore, then we are working on four cities in Gujarat. We are trying to see that what can be the most suitable alternative transit system apart from the metro. So we're working on the LRT, the Metro Light, the Metro Neo systems and all. We have a lot of experience in doing detailed design engineering. We are one of the consultants who worked on the Mauritius LRT project. So we have, our Indian team has experience of doing actually the Mauritius LRT thing. Then the RRT's project that we are working on, it's one of the important projects which once implemented, I think it will say about 2.5 lakh metric tons of CO2 annually. So that's an initiative in terms of reducing the GHG emissions uh, in the transport sector. We are doing two very interesting studies with AFD one is on climate change strategy for urban transport in India, whereby you're working with AFD and Mahu and other stakeholders on developing a climate-friendly strategy for urban transport, whereby the ministry and the other stakeholders can adopt some of the strategies and enhance their policy measures to achieve their objective as given the Paris commitment. Another interesting project we are working on <coughs> is the city bus route rationalization project in Kochi. Kochi, as uh, we all know, is one of the cities which has a very good metro network, a very good, now it will have a water metro network. But the problem is there are still some missing gaps and all. So which can be done by improving the city bus service here. At present, about approximately 60% of the bus routes run parallel to the existing metro network. So we are in process of rationalizing the routes, introducing more <coughs> energy efficient modes of transport and all so that they can be integrated with the existing MRTA system. So that's all I have to say, and thank you for uh, uh, initiatives and in, uh, uh, things by given by AFD and also by Mahua for giving us a chance to come and present here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ankush. Uh, now, I'll call Mr. N. Mohan, Deputy General Manager, Head of uh, Electric Vehicle uh, Charging Infrastructure, Convergence Energy Services, to give his insight on the electric vehicle systems which they are deploying. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So basically, it's more about the alternative uh, mobility solutions. So I'll try to focus more on like what initiative as a company we're doing in the uh, uh, electrifying the public uh, transport, uh, mainly with respect to electric uh, buses. Uh, about our company, I represent uh, Convergence Energy Services Limited, uh, which is a public uh, company, a joint venture of uh, 
EESL, uh, which itself is a central, uh, is a JV of central uh, PSUs. And basically we work in the clean mobility uh, solutions. We work in the entire electric mobility ecosystem, uh, be it uh, the promotion and adoption of electric vehicles, and also we're doing the aggregation of electric vehicles uh, at a large uh, scale. Uh, we're also working on some of the storage uh, solution, especially to promote uh, the charging infrastructure for electric vehicles and also trying to work on some of the, the grid-based ancillary services uh, solution in coming uh, years. Uh, we are also trying to put up some of the decentralized uh, solar project, uh, especially to uh, s uh, solarize the agriculture feeders and also trying to build up uh, completely off-grid-based uh, solar energy-based uh, solutions. Uh, with respect to our portfolio, uh, uh, some of the major uh, uh, business what we have done in the electric mobility uh, as a as an, uh, company, we're also deploying electric cars to the government institutions, where we typically uh, run the bulk procurement of electric cars, and we lease these electric cars to the institutions. So far, we deployed more than 1,600 electric cars to the institutions, where we're trying to help institution, we're trying to help institution uh, to switch from ICU vehicles to the electric uh, cars. Uh, with respect to aggregation of electric uh, vehicles, uh, we have done the aggregation of uh, around uh, 5450 electric buses. Uh, which is largest in the world when it comes to the aggregated quantity across the uh, uh, state transport undertaking on a OPEX uh, model. Uh, with respect to the public charging infrastructure, which I lead, uh, we have built up more than uh, 498 EV public charging points and major of the portfolio is in uh, Delhi NCR. We're also expanding stations in Chennai, Bangalore and Hyderabad uh, in coming years. Uh, we're also uh, putting up additional 345 EV charging stations, which are in under construction uh, stage. Uh, last year, we did a small ex exercise for aggregating the electric uh, three-wheelers, because mainly the three-wheelers is more an unorganized uh, sector. Uh, we did the aggregation of uh, close to one lakh uh, three-wheelers, but eventually uh, deployment has been planned to the, uh, the fintech companies. The reason being uh, the financing is one of the key issues in the electric mobility. So we try to bring in more fintech companies so this uh, the aggregated demand could be rolled out uh, across uh, Indian cities. Uh, specifically with respect to electric bus, the ambition of electrifying the Indian buses. Uh, so presently we have around close to 1.5 lakh uh, STU owned uh, buses. STU means straight transport undertaking or a government or a public entity organizations uh, which are uh, which are running the the, the buses for uh, uh, for the for the pub for the general public. Uh, even if you want to look at the, the, uh, the transition from uh, 2022 till 2030, so it would be requiring close to uh, 3.7 lakh uh, buses. And even if you focus of, uh, focus of uh, electrifying 30%, uh, somewhere we would be having close to 80,000 or 90,000 of uh, electric buses by uh, 2030. Uh, this would be a combination of more like uh, around 2.2 lakh uh, buses is more with respect to augmenting the transit uh, fleets. And around 1.5 like is more towards like replacing the overage buses which currently STUs and the uh, the government uh, transport departments are uh, are having. So we see a lot of uh, potential for electrifying the public transportation in the in the country. Uh, this is about the grand challenge. It's more like a success story for us. Like how the company did the aggregation of 5450 electric buses. Uh, for this, we worked with uh, five major uh, cities. The Delhi being one of the prominent partner with uh, CSL for. Uh, the electric bus campaign. Uh, we work with Surat, Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Calcutta. Uh, so previously also there were tenders which were for, for uh, taking the electric bus services. Uh, but there's some of the uh, the knowledge gap or with respect to some improvements which were which were required in the tendering uh, norms. Here uh, we try to switch the complete uh, the buying of electric buses model to the the buying the mobility as a service model. Here the STUs uh, need not make any investment in procuring the electric buses rather than they can procure the electric bus uh, services. So we try to help the STUs in uh, reducing their financial uh, implications uh, for uh, procuring these services. Uh, the experience so far uh, from the company side, uh, the grand challenge was more like consultative uh, process. We try to work with the STUs, we try to understand their previous experience, and we try to give them a more uh, freedom in selecting the type of buses, because as uh, told by the previous speakers, the each city or each state has a different demography and culture uh, requirement. So some cities would like to prefer more number of AC buses, low floor buses, and standard uh, buses. So depending upon the requirement, we try to uh, aggregate the demand. So which were able to uh, do it successfully for 5450 uh, electric buses. Uh, 
uh, we tried to standardize some of the contracting terms, which was not there previously, because each STUs would like to would run their own procurement for uh, smaller uh, volumes uh, with different terms and conditions. Obviously, with different terms and conditions, uh, the bidders or the OEMs would have difficulty in offering the best trade. We try to uh, resolve those issues by standing the terms and conditions. Some of the key components which we are able to standardize uh, with respect to the assured kilometers, like how many kilometers these person would run, uh, for which STUs need to pay. With respect to we able to bring in more volume and sizes, uh, clear contracting terms, and uh, the payment security was much more specified in the, the document. And also try to standardize the uh, the charging infra or the charging protocol for the electric buses. The, all the previous tenders had the freedom for OEMs to choose the, the charging infrastructure. But if you want to scale up the electric bus uh, segment, you have to look at standardizing the infrastructure also. The bus is only one element of the, the technology, but we need to enable or build a complete backend infrastructure. Uh, we specified CCS2 as one of the standard protocol, uh, which is now widely accepted by most of the OEMs. And we specified and standard specification for 12 meter and 9 meter uh, electric buses. So outcome and uh, what we try to do in uh, as a next phase of Grand Challenge 2. Uh, so we're able to discover the rates which were uh, almost like 27% uh, lower than the diesel and 23% lower than the CNG buses. And these are the rates which were discovered through a tendering uh, process. If you look at our uh, prices, which are much, much lower than even the CNG uh, buses. So typically, one would uh, have a price of 65 to 70 rupees for a diesel and a CNG buses. But we're able to bring down the cost uh, below 50 rupees uh, for 12 meter AC and 12 meter non AC uh, buses. And even the 9 meter, uh, it's well below 40, uh, 40 rupees. So we're able to uh, give a value proportion to the state transport uh, undertakings. Uh, they're able to save close to six and a half lakh uh, per bus per year, which constitutes almost like 1.97 crores. Uh, over a period of contract, but of 12 uh, years. As a next phase now, uh, based on the success and the learnings from uh, uh, Grand Challenge 1, uh, now Niti Aayog has given a mandate uh, to CSL to aggregate demand for 50,000 e-buses. And the program would be called as National e-bus uh, program in NEBP. Uh, we we uh, understood there is a uh, uh, limitation with respect to production also by the OEM. So even like we aspire to have more number of electric buses on road, but there is inherent production capacity by the OEMs and also like there's a larger dependency on the, the raw materials which they need to procure for manufacturing these uh, uh, buses. So we plan to roll out this uh, procurement of 50,000 in a phased uh, manner, recognizing the demand for uh, the public transport and also the demand which we could uh, get or secure from the state transport uh, units. Uh, as a first uh, part of NEBP program, we have rolled out uh, 5690 e-buses, uh, which is subscribed by five uh, cities, Delhi, Gujarat, Har uh, Haryana, Telangana, and, and Arunachal Pradesh. So this presently, this procurement is active. So by uh, November, we should be able to come out with the outcome of this uh, aggregated demand for 5690 electric buses. And lastly, I just want to show this uh, uh, slide, just to give in, like, we also did a small uh, off-grid solar-based EV charging station in uh, Ladakh area, where it's completely an off-grid uh, solution. Uh, where we put up, uh, we have deployed uh, 10 electric cars, along with uh, two fast DC charging stations with a solar uh, generation and a battery storage. So with this, I will uh, end my presentation. Thank you for uh, patient listening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mohan. Mr. Shashank, over to you. Yeah, I've been given the unenviable task of speaking to you all just before lunch, so I'll try and keep this as short as uh, possible. So uh, I'm the CM fellow. I work with the government of uh, NCT of Delhi. Uh, basically, what that means is uh, I work very closely with the Honorable uh, Dep Deputy Chief Minister on uh, monitoring and uh, strengthening frameworks for the Public Works Department. So <coughs> the so the title of the presentation is yeah more about just moving towards a people-centric Delhi. So we've heard a lot about what the future of our cities can hold, but I thought we can just pause for a bit and touch upon what the 
current uh, uh, practices are and how we can fix some of the basic issues that we have. Um, so there are three parts, effectively, of what I'm going to touch upon. The first step is to get the basics right. We have very, we have very complex cities, no doubt, but a lot of the challenges that we face at the end of the day are very basic. So getting that right is important before we move on to the next stage, which is rethinking existing infrastructure itself. And uh, finally, of course, both of these are, are pointless if we don't strengthen our maintenance and monitoring frameworks, because at the end of the day, decision-making uh, processes need to be taken with on-ground data and uh, sort of understanding how projects are actually moving forward on ground. Uh, so stre strengthening that back-end framework is important uh, to keeping the infrastructure in a healthy condition. So when it comes to getting the basics right, effectively what I wanted to talk about is that we very rarely need to reinvent the wheel, right? This, uh, the best practices uh, tend to already be out there. Uh, we just need to make sure that they are getting implemented on ground. So even if you take something as simple as road paint markings. Now, road paint markings is very very often something that's ignored uh, by both uh, commuters. Like, they don't really notice it. It's not something that's very noticed on, the, on a road. And at the same time, by uh, uh, the engineers as well and other implementing uh, agencies. So designing that, getting that right, was something that we started paying additional uh, focus on. And you, you might have experienced very often that you know you have these zebra crossings that go nowhere. You have lanes that suddenly appear and disappear uh, at women fancy. So the idea was to sit down with the designer, sorry, sit down with the engineers and actually design these uh, these stretches, and then go and test that out on site. Now there's a bit of a feedback loop here between the designing and the testing phase because uh, once we tested it, we realized that the actual uh, laborers who are executing it on site, they don't really have an understanding of the, uh, the, the guidelines and standards, and they're not really read through it uh, in much detail. So their version and their interpretation of our drawings was wholly different from what we had originally intended. So then we went back to the drawing board to see how we can templatize uh, some, of these, uh, uh, some of these designs. And now we're kind of still in the testing phase, but we're very soon going to be rolling out uh, and scaling up uh, how we how we do our um, uh, road paint markings across the city, so so that's one uh, sort of aspect of it. So getting the basics right is uh, is one key thing, but then after that we can then talk about and we can then think about uh, rethinking existing infrastructure. And this is primarily about what we prioritize and what we deprioritize, right? So in a street now. I mean, there are experts over here, urban experts. I'm sure all of you all are very well aware. The key aspects of what a good street is, the equitable distribution of ROW, so making sure that we have enough space for pedestrians, making sure that we have cycling infrastructure wherever possible, making sure there's enough lighting, that it's safe, uh, and that if we are planting horticulture, then it gets maintained well. So these are checkboxes that obviously all of the streetscaping projects will have. Uh, but in addition to that, there's one thing that we are also doing a little differently here at, uh, at the, you know, the Delhi government. Uh, and that is that we are rolling this out again in that sort of a testing phased out manner. So the government had uh, envisioned uh, streetscaping project for about 540 kilometers worth of roads across, uh, across the city of Delhi. But what we've started doing is we've piloted at 16 stretches on about 40 kilometers. We've piloted these, uh, these designs. We've given it to multiple different consultants. The idea being that different approaches will be taken in doing the design. And, uh, and each one you know, comes up with their own ideas, their own material palettes, their own kind of system thinking of how uh, streetscaping needs to be done. And we will now pick once, uh, within a month or so, these sample stretches will be done. And we will then pick the best uh, solutions across this, the most robust solutions, like even if materials, for instance, if we're talking about, the ones that are easiest to maintain. Because uh, these 16 stretches have uh, luckily been selected across different contexts across the city of Delhi. And we've used, uh, in most of the stretches, we've used the metro stations as a trigger. Uh, so the approach road to the metro station is taken as part of the sample stretch. So now if we look at the, yeah, we, we, our learnings from this is then going to inform how the remaining 500 kilometers worth of uh, roads are then streetscaped. So this is, uh, yeah, uh, this is mostly what I wanted to talk about in terms of rethinking existing infrastructure. Another small project that we had done uh, together with the Transportation Department and the Save Lives Foundation was uh, these tactical urbanism trials. 
so we had identified multiple black spots across the city uh, where we had uh, you know high road fatalities at certain junctions and we looked at fixing road geometries through uh, the through you know fixing the road geometry and making sure that the amount of um, uh, pedestrian space refuge islands was all neatly done and of course uh, with tactical urbanism you get you know, with uh, low cost uh, solutions, you get high impact. So this also served as a test case for us to now take this and make these strategic interventions at these sites. So very, very soon. So this is Rajgarh and Burari, for example. Uh, so you're very soon going to start seeing this uh, rollout um, on ground within hopefully the next uh, five to six months. Uh, and then coming to the last uh, part uh, of, of what I wanted to talk about, which is the strengthening of maintenance framework. So uh, this, I mean maintenance, but I'm also talking about maintenance and monitoring that goes together. So the example that you see here is the uh, streetscaping dashboard that we created. Effectively, with a small group of people, about seven, uh, seven of us together uh, working for the uh, PW department, we did a very comprehensive study of all of the streetscaping projects and how it's progressing, and we came up with 20 assessment parameters. So every week, we would then go to site and then assess how the project is progressing based on these set parameters. And what additionally we did, since the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, he really likes to have raw on-ground field data and, based, and make his decisions based off of that. So we also did, along with, the, with our study and our theoretical you know, um, sort of uh, interpretation of how the project is going, we also did videography of these stretches. And now this dashboard is like a live dashboard that then gets used by both your decision makers as well as your uh, senior officials within PWD. And we've noticed a significant uh, improvement in the way the streetscaping project is being done. Earlier, a lot of safety measures were being flouted just because there's no, not, not enough oversight over the contractors uh, to kind of keep them in check. So you have a dumping of materials that sort of spill over into your carriageway. You have improper barricading. All of these we managed to sort of get done. I mean, it's not perfect. As you can see, we have still a lot of reds on there and a lot of yellows. They're not all green yet, but it, it's going a small way in uh, you know, making sure that these roads are getting done right. In fact, uh, right outside the Habitat Center, we have one of our uh, streetscaping stretches. Uh, if you exit from gate one, if I'm not wrong, on Lodi Road, I uh, encourage you all to just check that out. Uh, take a leisurely stroll as you uh, exit perhaps in the evening. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Um, I have just listed out my email ID on there because I wanted to let you all know that we are looking for collaborations and looking for partnerships with uh, with, with private organizations, uh, especially with regard to maintenance of these assets. Right? Asset management and asset maintenance is going to be something, as we pour more and more money into infrastructure, we need to crack how we do asset management. So uh, just left my uh, email ID on there for, for that. All right, thank you. Thank you, Shashank. So we are at the close of this session. Uh, some of the takeaways that we have multiple alternate modes available. On highest order, if we see, we have uh, light metro, metro light, metro neo. Uh, we also have good solutions of shared mobility. We have. Uh, lot of solutions of micro and mini mobility. And then the best part is the street are the actually best solution because 40 to 50 percent people in fact the walk. And uh, they are in fact the what Shashank said that we have to really improve our street. We also have multiple solution to make our, our transport system green. So uh, where the Mohan has really indicated that how they are improving the energy efficiency as well as the reducing the, I mean, the risk of the new technology and also, uh, I mean, making it sustainable, financially sustainable for cities. So let's use all these tools and all these uh, modes and make our uh, cities more sustainable, move towards the low carbon cities. So with this, I close this session and thank you everyone uh, on the dais and every one of you who actually has been very patient and listening this. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. Sharma. I miss, thank you for all the panelists and uh, everyone participating to the session. So now we kindly invite you to go upstairs for because the lunch is served and you've been all very patient. Sorry once again for the little inconvenience happening. And yeah, we're all very happy to see you here. Thank you. <laughs>